More strong storms are possible this evening after we've already seen rounds of severe weather all afternoon long. Brandon Robinson is here with us first and has more on what to expect in the next few hours. Brandon. Steve, we are calm for the moment, but I have a feeling that will not last too much longer. We are tracking some stronger storms down near the Kentucky-Tennessee border that could become severe at any minute, but we all have to see how it plays out, and we could also see some hail a little bit later on as well. Looking at the live pinpoint Doppler radar, you'll see again those bands of rain starting to move out of parts of uh, uh, eastern Kentucky there into West Virginia, which is not a good area because they've had some flooding issues up in Lawrence County, which you'll hear more about here in just a little bit. Down to the south, we are still seeing again a little bit of action that way down toward the Kentucky-Tennessee border. All warnings basically have expired for now, except for the severe thunderstorm warning over in Lee County, Virginia, and damage reports are coming in. So we're hoping to get more on that here in a little bit. I know our Phil Pendleton is in Pulaski County trying to get some more on that. You can see he's dealing with some storms coming through there and some of those right below the severe limits. Lots of electricity there with those as well. Tornado watch continues until 8 o'clock tonight. Highway 80, Howe Rogers Parkway corridor and south, basically into Virginia and Tennessee. And I'd say they'll let that go by almost every minute there unless these storms really start to calm down pretty quickly. Temperatures rebounding back into Monticello, but I think now we are transitioning over unless we see some warmth push in with some late day sunshine because we still got a couple hours before the sun goes down. I think we're transitioning to that more of that hell threat that we would expect to see once that low passes by a little bit later on tonight. Statewide temperatures still close to 70 in Louisville there for uh, Kentucky Oak today in the Derby tomorrow 67 Bowling Green 67 Nashville so we could see a quick temperature rebound especially before we get to dark 55 tonight storms or showers and storms will continue before finally calming down so keep an eye out for that and we will keep you posted as need be Steve all right Brandon thank you check out this video we got from Pulaski County earlier this afternoon the video shared to Twitter by Michael Heath shows what appears to be at least a funnel cloud at the Burnside Marina on Lake Cumberland and we've seen a couple other videos showing something similar so uh, many people think a tornado did touch down in that area this afternoon as Brandon mentioned earlier Phil Pendleton is surveying the damage we hope to hear from him uh, a little bit later on certainly we hope to have more tonight at 11 of course they're getting more storms right now well the Lake Cumberland Speedway dirt racing sustained damage after heavy winds went through that area and that's in the same general area uh, as that video we were showing you out of uh, Lake Cumberland in Burnside. The Speedway posted photos to its Facebook page showing damage to bleachers, fencing, the ticket booth and more. The racetrack is located in Burnside and is celebrating its 40th anniversary this year. The next event was scheduled to take place on May 14th. The storms also caused some high water issues. There were some flooded roads in the Corbin area this afternoon. Multiple places were seeing high water, including Roy Kidd Avenue, Master Street, and off the Cumberland Falls Highway exit 25. These pictures were taken after the first round of storms earlier today. According to a Facebook post from the Powell County Office of Public Information, the Mountain Parkway eastbound is closed due to a crash. That closing is at the 13 mile marker. We do not know if anyone was hurt, but officials said the crash involved several cars. In Fallsburg, up in northeastern Kentucky, this video was shared with their sister station WSAZ showing some pretty major flooding near the West Virginia line. They've had quite a few flood related issues up in uh, northeastern Kentucky and West Virginia today. Again, drivers are encouraged to use caution as a flood warning for Lawrence County remains in effect until 1030 this evening. If you do see high water, of course, turn around, don't drown. Be sure to download our WIMT weather app too to keep up to date as rain continues rolling across the region. You can see live radar 24 seven. If you've not downloaded the app, just take a picture of the code there on your screen that will take you to a link to our weather app that you can download. Well, another uh, crash this afternoon, uh, this on I-75, according to the Mount Vernon Fire Department, at last check, I-75 was still closed at the 58 mile marker due to a crash. You could see on our weather camera a few minutes ago, that's a still from that, the backup there. The crash involved multiple semi trucks, we're told, we don't know if there are any injuries from that crash. 
Governor Andy Bashir says more than $6.1 million from the West Kentucky State Aid Funding for Emergencies Fund will go to seven Western Kentucky cities, counties, and utilities. The awards include more than $2.8 million for the city of Mayfield, more than $2 million for Mayfield Electric and Water Systems, almost $200,000 for Caldwell County Physical Court, and more than $811,000 thousand for Marshall County Physical Court plus more than 121,000 for the city of Dawson Springs. All those areas of course greatly impacted by the December tornado outbreak that uh, killed about 80 people. Well the poor man's Harlan County Derby E party comes back tonight. The event usually takes place every year in Lexington. Organizers moved it though to Florida for two years because of the pandemic. This time, the event will be at the Roxy and Stagger Inn downtown and just kicked off a few minutes ago at 6 o'clock. Money from the event will benefit the Christ Episcopal Church in Harlan. We hope to have more from that derby party and maybe some others coming up tonight at 11 o'clock. And parties like that popping up across the Commonwealth, of course, means it's nearly time for the Run for the Roses, the 148th Kentucky Derby, a sports tradition that began in 1875, returns tomorrow. Of course, today is Oaks Day. The race at Churchill Downs in Louisville is the first contest in horse racing's coveted Triple Crown, which includes the Preakness and Belmont Stakes. And fun fact, a writer coined the phrase run for the roses in 1925 because of the garland of 554 red roses draped over the winter. The race is also known as the greatest two minutes in sports. Even the youngest Kentuckians are getting in the Derby spirit. Kids at Bright Start Child Care in Jefferson County celebrated their annual Derby Hat Parade Thursday afternoon. The three, four, and five-year-olds created festive hats to capture their Derby spirit. Some wore fascinators or fedoras, while others created looks of their own. Um, we made it with glue and those stickers at the back. It was very awesome, and, and I get to see the people. It's really cool. The little ones marched in a parade to share the derby fun with their families. The singing of My Old Kentucky Home is a derby tradition, but it's not without its controversy. A new book released yesterday looks into the history behind the song. The book is called My Old Kentucky Home, The Astonishing Life and Reckoning of an Iconic American Song. It's written by Emily Bingham, who says the original lyrics and the song's early popularity among white minstrel performers perpetuated a romanticized image of slavery and its message is out just in time for Derby. We can choose what we carry with us into the future. For 100 years, this has been Kentucky's brand, but we can decide if we want it to be our message to the world for 100 years to come. Churchill Downs refers to a Frederick Douglass quote about the song, saying it awakens sympathy for the slave. And a statement this week from Churchill Downs said it appreciates that historical perspective. May 6th is National Nurses Day. It marks the start of National Nurses Week, which is dedicated to honoring nurses, highlighting and recognizing the sacrifices they make every day. For some, that means decades of service, dedicating their lives to public health. WYMT's Keaton Hall talks with one nurse who's been at Hazard ARH for more than 30 years and despite the hardships of the pandemic, still encourages others to consider going into the field. Tony Reynolds has spent 32 years helping thousands of patients and their families, getting to know them better along the way. Just the time that we get to spend with the patients and their families is what makes the job worth it. Tony says the relationships he's formed throughout the three decades of experience are what makes his work so rewarding. I went in it for the money, but I stayed for the patients. But with the satisfaction of helping patients comes the pain of losing them. Something Tony says he carries with him long after it happens. I, I remember quite a few patients uh, and I went to quite a few funerals of the patients. He tells us it can be like losing a family member, especially those who spend a lot of time in his care. You know, we'd see some patients two, three years, sometimes longer. So we knew the families, we knew the patients, uh, we knew their pets. 
So, you know, they became like family. So. And the COVID-19 pandemic has not made things any easier for Tony, something the more than 3 million nurses working in America today can attest to. They're the ones that's seeing the patient every day. They're the ones that's having to deli deliver the medicines that can save the patient's life. So, you know, they are the front line ones. So. And they're the ones that's coming into contact and ris actually risking their lives to take care of these patients because of the COVID. Even still, Reynolds does not discourage those interested in joining the field. I would say stick with it. There's going to be days that you think, what have I done? Why did I go into this? Uh, I think that the good times outweigh the bad times 10 to 1. Thanking those who have risked everything to make sure their patients have more good times than bad. In Hazard, Keaton Hall, WYMT Mountain News. National Nurses Week runs through May 12th. Still tracking severe weather across the mountains tonight. We're going to continue to track that for a little while longer before hopefully it starts to wind down. I'll talk about the full forecast coming up in just a little bit. And we'll hear from officials about a new learning center in Paintsville that's working to connect rural students with potential careers.